I meant it's newer than the video that I had made before. Um, we're doing the Rock Pocket Mice. We've been doing this for years, so it's not new, but I wanted to run through it really fast and have a video. So you're going to play the, the movie from uh, Biointeractive from HHMI, and it talks about the Rock Pocket Mice, right? So they come in brown and they come in black, and they're looking at lava flows in New Mexico, in the Ring of Fire, and, and they notice that all the mice on the lava flows are black, whereas all the mice living on sandy areas are brown and so they go through kind of the speed of natural selection and how something that gives such a great advantage it helps them blend in so the hawks don't get them can actually evolve quite quickly um, and so for the first question explain how the black fur mutation first occurred you want to just emphasize right that the environment doesn't cause the mutation to happen but the mutation was random and then the environment selects for the mutation so that's what you want to emphasize here for number two, explain how it became the predominant fur color. So now we're talking about fitness. So the black color gives them a, a, an edge. It gives them more uh, higher fitness. They're able to survive and reproduce better. And so they're selected for by the environment and the population evolves. Uh, for number three, if the black fur mutation, is it a benefit in all populations of rock pocket mice? And, and the answer to this is no, right? Pocket mice that are living on the sand that are brown, it, that's the advantage. So a black one would stick out like a sore thumb. So that's, we want to emphasize that traits that evolve that are mutations that happen are not always positive. Um, it depends on the environment, right? So like the MC1R mutation that we learned about in the Jack and Jill activity, it causes the, the white skin and the red hair and the freckles. That's really beneficial in northern and far southern climates where the sunlight is less, but it's really awful at the equator and, and vice versa with darker pigments. Um, number four, if you found a second population of rocket, uh, rocket, rock pocket mice living on a lava flow 20 miles away, um, and the, the mutation causing black fur is the same mutation in both populations, what's the most likely explanation? So if the mutation is the same in, in both populations, it's likely that they share a common ancestry where the mutation occurred, and so it's a migration event maybe. But it is also possible that it's a random mutation that happens to be the same mutation because that particular one causes the black fur. Um, but it's, it's asking here in number five, is it possible that the volcanic rock caused the same mutation in each population? The answer to that is unequivocally no, right? Because the environment does not cause the mutation. But could it have selected for a similar or same mutation? Yes, but it does not cause it. And then we have this third population living in Mexico on dark colored volcanic rock. You sample this population, you find there's an equal proportion of dark and light colors. And then you return every two years to resample, you continue to find equal population or equal proportions of the light and the dark. So in this case, the light and the dark doesn't seem, the light or the dark doesn't seem to give any advantage to the mice. So the, the best hypothesis here is that the predator is not visual. Maybe it's a snake that hunts by, by movement or by heat or by smell. Um, and so the coloration doesn't really matter. And then you would expect to see random proportions of dark and light. Um, and so here they've got the original population. So you run the experiment, uh, this experiment. You fence off a location and you put traps for the mice. Each time you catch a dark colored mouse, you relocate it to a zoo. And every time you catch a light colored mouse, you release it back to the environment. Um, and so if that's the case, what you're gonna end up with lots of light colored, very few dark colored. And so they can sketch that and upload that. And then what will the population look like five years from now? Here is the key right here with this one. If, in, if we're staying in Mexico, so you've just manipulated the population so it's mostly light and almost no dark, over time, it's not gonna go back to even. It's gonna stay mostly light with a few dark because there isn't a visual selective pressure right so that's really important for students to understand that if there's not a pressure it doesn't mean we're always going to have even values we will stay with whatever the proportion is at the time and so that's what they're going to explain in 8b um, and that's it for the homework